Hey guys, what is up people? How are you guys doing? Welcome back to today's session. This is going to be session number two of Force and Laws of Motion. Today we'll be talking about the first law of motion as well as inertia. Welcome to today's session. My name is Anum Manoharan and once again, hoping that you guys are doing good and taking very good care of yourself. Welcome to today's session guys. So in the last session, we talked about balance done, balance force. Today we'll be talking about inertia and first law of motion. But as always guys, the quote for today, as always, there's no way that we're going to skip it. And the quote for today is this, guys. If you never try, you'll never know. As uh, it's, it's a, you know, it's a fact. You never know that you like something or you don't like something as long as you don't try it, right? It's like one of the best examples is food. So no matter, you don't, you can't just judge the food. Like they say, no, don't judge a book by its cover. So it's like that. So if you really want to, you know, uh, what to say, try and explode a lot of things. You really have to give your, you know, give your 100% of it. Give a shot. Does not matter whether you fail or succeed. Give a shot. Then you know and make a, you can make a, you know, sound decision based on that. Anyways, guys, with that code in mind, let us get started with today's session. So people, in the last session, Force and Laws of Motion, I'd ask you, I, I asked you a question. The question was this, in which direction will the object move? If on one side there's a force of 15 Newton acting and on the other side, the, uh, the force is 30 Newton, what direction would the object move? And the answer to this question is, is that the object would move towards the uh, towards actually it's actually towards the right uh, the answer is towards the right not towards the left guys it's actually towards the right because this is your right hand side so it moves towards the right and what is the net force acting on it how do you calculate that the if, when the force are acting in opposite direction you have to subtract it so it's 50 minus 30 which gives you 20 newton acting towards right as simple as that that's all guys it's towards your right, yes. So it'll be 20 Newton acting towards the right. As simple as that, guys. Moving on to the next uh, topic for today, guys. Let's let's understand about the topic that we have today. So let's take a scenario. Imagine there's a ball, all right, and you roll the ball on a floor. Now the ball would never go on forever, right? At the end of the day, after some time, the ball would roll and then stop. Why does the ball stop? You guys already know the answer for that. Friction. Obviously, there's friction between the ball and the floor because of which the ball comes to a state of rest. Now, you just know what friction is. You've studied that in your eighth grade, so there's nothing for me to explain. So people, let's say this. Let's say you're walking or you're running and there's some water on the floor. What would happen? You would slip and fall. And when you're slipping and falling down, the speed is actually increasing. Why? Because the friction is absent in that particular in that particular place there's absence of friction and because of that absence of friction you tend to move a little bit more faster which uh because of which you lose your balance and then you end up tripping for uh, you know tripping down and hurting yourself okay now out of these two scenarios one conclusion that you can say is that if the force uh, or if the floor is frictionless if there's no friction water if it's a perfectly smooth flow an ideal flow without any kind of irregularities then if i roll a ball it should essentially move on forever with a constant speed because there is no friction acting in the opposite direction to so actually slow it down so the ball would uh, you know ideally the ball should continuously move on uh, you know forever because there is no friction or there's no other force acting on it now my friends this is what is Newton's first law of motion. A body, if it's moving in constant speed or if it's moving at uniform motion, would continue to do so unless and until an external force is applied on it. So let me just define it for you guys. What is Newton's first law of motion? An object, remain, an object remains in the state of rest or in uniform motion unless and until an external force is applied on it for example let's take this mouth this mouse so the mouse is uh, standing still it's in the state of rest as long as i don't apply a force the mouse would not move it will stand there itself forever on a frictional uh, a frictionless floor if i roll a ball the ball should essentially keep on moving forever with the same speed as long as there is no external force acting in the opposite direction to stop that ball that my friends is the first law of motion which is also called as law of inertia now why do i call it as law of inertia 
let's understand that let's talk about mass and inertia now. now you guys already know what is mass mass is what the amount of matter present in a body no matter what object it is it has mass because everything is made up of matter everything is made up of atoms and molecules so there is uh whatever uh you know the uh, what is the amount of that matter that is what is mass measured in kg you guys already know about it what is inertia then all right let's take an example you know all notice this that when you're going in a car and suddenly when they apply a brake like you imagine that you're sitting in the back seat or you're right you're driving the car and when you had a, when you hit the brake suddenly you tend to move forward what is the reason the car stopped you should also stop no why are you moving forward and then stopping let's understand that here's the thing guys when you are riding in a car the lower part of your body is in contact with the car right and because the car is moving the lower part of your body is also in motion and because the lower part of the body is in motion the upper part is also moving along with it but when you hit the brakes the lower part of your body comes to a state of rest because it is in contact with the car but the upper part of the body is not aware of it so it continues to move in that same motion it continues to move at the same speed and then suddenly it realizes and then moves back or you know you again move front and come back this my friends is what is inertia i'll tell you that i'll explain that so here's the thing is so when you apply the brakes what happens the upper part of the body continues to move with the car because it, it according to it it does not see it, it does not know the car has come to a state of rest so it will move forward and then when it realizes it it again comes back i know you uh, lay back a little and then you i would say come to a state of rest so what is inertia is nothing but the property of a body to remain in the state of rest or in uniform motion until and unless an external force applied on it that is what is inertia but you don't have to mention the last part until and unless an external force applied on it because that would make it the first law of motion the first law of motion so don't don't mention that just write it as it is a property if they ask you in the exams so write it as the property of a body to maintain a continuous or a uniform motion or rest Ah, uh, that is what is called as inertia. The property of the body is what is called as inertia. As simple as that. You can think tons of examples like this. Guys, imagine, ah, uh, like for example, you know, ah, uh, when you are, ah, uh, when you are running, when you are running, or even when you start the car. For example, when you start the car, also this is something that you notice when you start the car and you accelerate suddenly, your body moves backwards. Why does your body move backwards? Because your lower part of the body starts moving along with the car, but your upper part of the body is not. so it moves backwards because it is trying to resist that rest it is trying to remain in the state of rest then it goes along with the car then you know you move front a little once you get used to that it you know the uh, how to say your body also becomes normal and goes along with the car so that is uh, what is inertia guys now that you want to see this guys let me tell you one important thing about inertia imagine uh, you know you have a object which is heavy and imagine about object which is light the object which is heavier would have higher inertia and the object which is which is lighter would have lesser inertia that means a heavier object would resist that motion that change in motion more compared to uh, you know object which is lighter for example it's more difficult for you to push a table a heavier table compared to a lighter table why is it so because the heavier table has more inertia so it is trying to resist that change in state of rest or it is trying to change resist that change in motion that is why it feels much more harder for you to push a box or an object which is much more heavier compared to one which is lighter so that is the thing guys heavy objects tend to resist more uh, change in the state of motion and secondly like i told you heavier objects would have more inertia if you have ever seen you know if you have ever played cricket that is the best example that you can come up with when you are you playing with those uh, Costco ball or with those rubber balls, you know, it does not take much force. We you don't have to apply much force to actually stop that ball. But then, if you're playing with that leather ball, the cork ball that is used in international cricket and all, you have to apply more force to actually stop the ball because the ball is much more heavier. So you have to apply greater force to actually stop the ball from getting to the boundary. So that is the thing is that is all about inertia. Now that you understand this, guys, let's do some questions. But before we get into the questions. I have an important announcement to make, and this is something which will definitely help you guys. So pay attention for the next two to three minutes, and then we'll uh, solve some questions as well, guys. So here's the thing, guys. We did a survey, 
and we had asked you what are the problems that you guys are facing on youtube we had done a survey and many of you guys came up with a lot of problems uh you know that you are facing especially during this quarantine time so few of the things that i would like to mention again there are more than this but i'm pretty sure that you would be able to relate to whatever i'm going to say and there are few more obviously to this the first thing is that some my doubts are not in, I'm not getting cleared i don't have uh, you know where do i ask my doubts because there are websites out there but then it takes a lot of time for them to clear the doubts so when do i get it how do i get it cleared uh, you know time and again uh, at the exact same time second thing that you guys had a uh, problem with was notes because you are studying from a lot of uh, you know youtube channels and websites and stuff but then i uh, you know your whatever notes you're getting is just not enough you might need more to what uh, you're getting apart from that guys uh, tests and assignments are also one more problem that you guys are facing because you can't just go and sit in front of your uh, board exams and write whatever you want you have to practice so where do you test yourself where do you how do you you know check whether you are really whether you have really understood the concepts or not and assignments to practice the particular concepts as well apart from that competitive exams because i'm pretty sure that everyone of you guys are into you know thinking about writing your nsos or olympias because that carries a lot of value as well so you are all thinking about that as well so how do you uh, you know train yourself for that and apart from that choice of your own schedule because you are not free when the teacher is free uh, the teacher is free but then you are not free so there's a lot of uh, you know what to say a uh, lot of problems of schedule as well which you guys face a lot and apart from that obviously one of the most common thing is the choice of language because in india there's a wide variety of variety of languages that we speak from north to south to east to west so that is also a very big problem now here's the thing is we have begun to have solved all of these problems now how did we solve all of these problems inside the class you'll not just have one teacher you'll have two teachers one is the master teacher and you'll also have the class teacher to help you clear your doubts so master teacher would be teaching you the concepts and helping you clear your doubts with that the class teacher would be there to solve all of your doubts as well you get each and every notes you'll get complete recordings of each and every class and notes as well so you can download it watch how many ever times you want and even if you can, even if you miss out a class you can always watch that as well you get tests and uh, you get regular tests and assignments to check where you are going wrong and based on these tests and assignments you'd also be getting a detailed report card as well which tells you where you're going wrong and what are the things you can do to improve yourself as well you'll be trained for competitive exams you can choose your own on schedule whatever chess schedule that you feel comfortable in you can choose that you don't have to come to the teacher's timing whenever you feel like your your brain is more active just study at that time and you can also choose your own language now here's the thing guys we are offering our uh, sessions in english as well as hindi not other regional languages but soon they will be added for now it's hindi and english and majority of the country understands these two languages that's why we went with that so here's the thing guys apart from all of these you'll also have unlimited live classes you want to attend 20 classes in a day go ahead do it nobody's going to stop you it's just you who's going to set the limit and you'll also have crash courses and micro courses with detailed uh, performance report card and also you get personalized attention because of the class teacher so here's the thing guys what you have to do is visit this website vdnt.in/ytpro so once you visit this website what happens is that you get this particular screen which tells you to choose your uh, which uh, tells you to choose which grade are you in are you in first grade or 12th grade that is the range that we are in right now so let's say that you are in someone in 10th standard you click on 10th standard they'll ask you which board are you in are you in cbc icc or maharashtra board for now these are the three things that we are offering soon we'll be adding more to that as well so let's say that you are in cbc syllabus once you click on it this is what you're going to get what and all i just told you uh, everything is mentioned over here you can just pause the video and watch that as well and apart from this guys what you have to do is basically click on get subscription once you click on get subscription this is what you're going to get one month three month and six month just give me one minute guys i'll explain this and then we'll can do the questions as well so let's say that you want to try the 30 days uh, 30 day subscription so one month subscription base price of that is 4000 rupees but you get a primary discount even without any coupon code and essentially you are actually paying 6, 2699 rupees on top of that if you use a coupon code ak pro you'll get another additional 400 rupees discount making the price to be 2294 rupees 0.35 paise that's how much you'll be paying for that one month 
Let's say that you want to try as a three month course. For the three month course, the base price is 10,000 rupees. You get a primary discount of 6,999 rupees. That is what essentially you'll be paying. And if you use the coupon code AK Pro, this time you'll get a discount of 1,049 rupees and the price comes down to be 5,949 rupees in total. Let's say that you want to try the six month course. For the six month course, the price, uh, the base price is 16,000 rupees. You get a primary discount of about 5,000 rupees, making the price to be 1,104, uh, 1, 11,499 rupees. Once you, you know, enter this coupon code AK Pro, you'll get another additional discount of 1,700 rupees and essentially you'll be paying uh, 9,774 rupees. So what you have to do is click on this enter coupon code and enter the coupon code AK Pro and avail the discount. So here's the thing guys, these are all the courses. Do check it out. Trust me, you'd find it really, really helpful. Try it out and let me know what you think about it guys. With that said, let us get back into the uh, quizzes. So here is the uh, with the website as well as the code you can pause the screen and take a screenshot of it if you want to let's go ahead and solve some questions here's the first question is inertia of a moving object depends on what the mass of the object the momentum of the object the speed of the object or the shape of the object what does inertia of an object depend on mass momentum speed or the shape what is the answer guys Comment section below. Let me know what is the answer. The answer to this question is definitely without a doubt, it's the mass. Greater the mass, greater the inertia. Less the mass, lesser the inertia. Simple as that. Next question. Which of the following is not an example of inertia? Sudden braking of vehicle caused forward motion of body. A person is not able to move a bus by pushing. A ball cannot be moved without application of force. A moving ball and ground will stop after some time. Which of these do you think is the right answer? Comment section A, B, C, or D. And the answer to this question, guys, would be option number D. Without a doubt, it'll be option number D. Why option number D is the right one? Because this is definitely inertia of motion. Because, you know, and when you apply the brakes, I told you, your body tends to move a little forward. A person is not able to move a bus, inertia of rest, that is. A, uh, you know, ball cannot be moved without application of force. That is, again, inertia of rest. So this one is nothing but frictional force, which is definitely not an example of inertia. Next question. The people in a bus are pushed backwards when the bus starts suddenly uh, moving because of what inertia due to rest inertia due to motion inertia due to direction or external force why does why do people move backwards uh oh sorry yeah why why are the why people okay why people are uh, pushed backwards when the bus starts moving they have not mentioned the word moving though but yes that is understood guys inertia of rest inertia of motion inertia of direction or external force and the answer comment section below the answer to this question is is option number a that is it's inertia of rest because when you're standing when you're sitting still in a bus you're trying to resist your body's trying to resist that motion so suddenly when it moves forward your body would move backwards because it is trying to stay in that state state of more state of rest itself that is the answer for this question is very simple question moving on to the fourth one which of the following statement is correct all objects tend to resist change in state of rest only some objects tend to resist change in state of rest only all objects tend to resist change in rest or state of motion uh, or an object at rest can move without any force comment section below the answer to this question guys would be option number c because all the objects would resist the change of motion or rest uniform motion rest it'll try to resist it at any you know it'll try to resist as much as it can so obviously option number c would be the right answer it is not just uh, resistance in the state of rest or it is not just uh, you know some objects which tend to resist the change of rest uh, uh, inertia of rest it like tries to resist that uh, state of rest but yes it'll be all objects both resisting rest as well as motion I know, rest and motion. I told you a lot of things. All right, here's the next one, guys. Uh, Newton's first law of motion is also known as what? Law of momentum, law of impulse, law of inertia, or law of acceleration. Comment section. The answer to this question, guys, you already know it. It is nothing but law of inertia. Because the Newton's first law itself is a body continues to be in the state of rest or in the state of motion until and unless an external force is applied on it, which by the definition is nothing but law of inertia. Okay, so that's it guys. As always, this is your homework today. Let me know what is the answer in the comment section below. The question is this, when a car is suddenly accelerated, passenger inside the car are uh, pushed, what? Comment section, let me know if you want your name to be in the next session. Thank you for joining people. I hope you enjoyed today's session. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel so that you're aware of what and all videos are coming out. And I know you're able to, uh, you know, uh, and click on the bell, bu bell button so that you're notified about it as well. Thank you for joining. See you all in the next one. Take care of yourself. Stay safe. This is Anup signing off for the day. Take care. Have a great day ahead. Bye bye people.